Hi, everybody. So sorry about that. Uh, technical difficulties, but we are here. And I have Arden with us today, Arden Moore. And I am so excited to get this going. So thanks all for bearing with us uh, while we get started here. First of all, I just wanted to thank everybody for being here. Hi, Jennifer. Yes, this is up and working now. <laughs> Thank you. I again want to welcome everybody. This is the Canine First Aid and Safety Webinar, and it's brought to you by WAG Out Loud. If you don't know me, my name is Krista, and I'm the host of the WAG Out Loud podcast, which is a weekly show where we are obsessed with sharing information with dog lovers just like you so they can make well-informed decisions for their dog's health and well-being. And if you're not part of our Wag Out Loud Unleashed community, I highly recommend that you check it out so that you can be a part of more events like this and get to, get to hear firsthand from experts like we have today with Arden in the field of canine health and nutrition. So being a member is absolutely free and you can learn more on the Wag Out Loud podcast uh, the community, we have partner products, resources, and more. Just go to wagoutloud.com. And I quickly wanted to do some housekeeping on this platform, which I love. It's called Crowdcast. And I just wanted to point out some of the great features. In the bottom right where it says something nice, that's the comment box. And if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know where you're coming in from, that would be great. Again, in the bottom right where it says, say something nice. You'll also see a link at the bottom of your screen, which is labeled polls, and that should be lit up with one question in there. So if you can take a second and just go in there and answer the question so that we can get an idea of how many of you know how to do CPR on your dog. I just wanted to see how many people um, have been certified or have an idea of how to do CPR on your dog. So answer that poll. And then the chat box I already told you about. So go ahead and Jennifer, this is, uh, I know Jennifer, she's from I Work For Dogs. She's in Los Angeles. So welcome. <laughs> and then in the middle of your screen, that says ask a question, and that is the link, very important. That's where you're going to go and ask your questions, and you're going to see questions that others are asking, so you can even vote on other questions that you see there. And since we only have an hour, and I want to serve everyone, we'll be answering the most upvoted questions, so be sure to tag the ones that most interest you. And again, it's the ask your question link please don't put it in the comments. And for those who want to stay till the end, Arden is going to be doing a giveaway. So I wanted to entice everyone with that. And our theme for the community this month is pet first aid and awareness, uh, especially dogs. And it's perfect timing because April is National Pet First Aid Awareness Month. So I am honored to have Arden with us today, and she is a pretty big deal. Uh, she is known as America's Pet Health and Safety Coach, and she's here to talk about how to be prepared with some canine first aid and safety tips. Arden, thanks for leading this super important discussion today. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and share with everyone why are you so passionate about playing it safe with our pets? Well, first of all, Krista, thank you. Big pause up to everybody for being here today. A lot of us are SIP, stay in place. It sounds like a dog training cue, doesn't it? Sit, <laughs> stay, don't drive. That's <laughs> the era we're in. But uh, I think that dogs make us such better people. I've been uh, in the pet field for over 20 years. I've written over two dozen pet books. I have a radio show, but the best part is I keep learning from the very best in the fields of veterinary medicine and behavior. And I have a talented uh, four-legged team 
you're going to meet a couple of them today. And so my feeling is, especially now, we're going a little house crazy. And the one joy probably is that dog in your home or two. I have three. So without further ado, I would really like you to meet my uh, four-legged teaching partner. She weighs in at 35 pounds. Come on in, Kona. Come on up, Kona. Hello, everybody. Hey, Kona. <laughs> we pause up, everybody. Wag out loud. Woo! -hoo. She goes, um, my little bio is I hail from Southern California. Arden found me at a shelter. I passed every temperament test, including must love cats. This is pet safety cat Casey. This is pet safety dog Kona. And together we teach veterinary approved hands-on pet first aid classes of all different levels, including instructor training all over the country. Thank goodness for the uh, platforms like you're using, Krista, and I use Zoom because we're reaching people homebound and they're learning first aid. And so Kona is uh, five years old. She's passed three levels of obedience, canine good citizen, and should we tell her the other one? Yeah, I am a certified therapy dog. So <laughs> we'll resume going back to see kids in schools and at SPCA critter camps. And we love seeing our older folks at the memory care centers in Brookdale. We call them the Brookdale buddies, right? Yeah, that's the right word. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And Kona is kind of a celebrity. Don't want to let the cat out of the bag. But this is my newest book. It's a kid's guide to dogs. And throughout the pages, Kona says something to the kids. So she's your guide and we can let the cat out of the bag. We're going to give away an autographed copy of this book for those who hang in there today. Right? Very nice. So a kid's guide to dogs. And I love it because we have DIY. We've got a lot of safety tips, but we're reaching kids and the kid in you of all ages. So I don't know if that's kind of a good enough intro, uh, Krista. That's perfect. And again, for anybody that has questions throughout Arden's pre presentation, please go to the ask a question link at the bottom and put your question there and I'll be fielding those. And I'm going to give Arden and Kona the floor. I'm going to shrink myself, but I'll still be here listening. Okay. Sounds good. Hey folks, this is really important. Before I get into some specific uh, pet first aid demos, I got to tell you, as the pet health and safety coach, we are living in very unique times. You, your family, and that includes your two, three, and four-leggers are all sequestered in their home. And so what's happening is there's some issues, both behavioral and safety-wise, that could be impacting your dog. So I want to share a little bit, and I, I'm sure you've seen the memes out there where the dog is just like, I don't need another walk. That was my 20th of the day. So our dogs have gone, who are very into predictability, they go from having maybe one walk a day or two, and they're living with bored humans, and they're getting lots of walks. Well, they can get overworked, and they can have stress on their limbs. So that's the thing we need to be careful of. The other thing is dogs and cats, while we're away at work, they're catnapping. Our dogs are catnapping. But now we're home 24-7, and the dog doesn't have that nice little spot quiet on the couch anymore. It's shared by the whole family. So some dogs are going to have some signs of stress. I am a fear-free certified professional with Dr. Marty Becker's group. I, I'm a national speaker for them. And the whole thing about FAS, fear, anxiety, and stress, you got to know what's normal in your dog. So if they're starting to not eat as the regular amount or they're ravenous or let's do poop patrol in the backyard and it's starting to look a little gnarly, these are signs of stress that are taking its toll on the on the physical side of the dog um, if they're whining more barking destroying things that they're, they're bored or they're feeling stressed so that's a whole different topic but i'm here to share some unexpected safety concerns in our homes now that pertain to our dogs 
So number one, I bet a lot of us, let's see if I have, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, this is the age of carb loading, right? Many people have bought snack packs and they're eating, probably not the best, but we're bored and we're at home. But this nice little snack pack, come here, Kona. Come on, Kona up. Come on, Kona up. So Kona has a great nose, like all our dogs do. So Kona gets her nose in that bag, and in some cases, they can actually suffocate because the bag gets stuck. So this is a good tip for your kids and your family. Make sure you are putting these away and they're not just hanging out on the floor or on the couch because something as simple as a snack bag are causing deaths in some of our dogs. The second thing we need to be concerned with is the fact that we, some of us are on keto diets or you're diabetic or you're looking to reduce your sugar intake. So you're going for sugar-free items. Sugar-free peanut butter is here to stay. The problem is it contains, as you guys know, xylitol. And xylitol to a dog can cause liver failure and seizures. So when you pick up that jar of peanut butter, please read the label because if it's a sugar-free or it has X-Y-L-I-T-O-L, -L, that's a doggy N-O-N-O. -N -O. It will really wreak havoc on a dog. So if you're lathering a Kong or a Toppled or something else, make sure that you know that's real peanut butter. Third, some dogs have little digestive issues. So you want to give them a little canned pumpkin. Please make sure it's canned pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling, because that's about four times the sugar content. And again, sugar is not good to a dog's physiology. The third thing is raisins. Something are grapes. They're loaded with sugar, and they can shut down a dog's kidneys. And also, if they pop a grape in their mouth, as we're going to show you a little bit later, they can have choking issues. So that's just some of the food unexpected. Now let's talk about the environment that's changed since COVID-19. And that has to do with the fact that we're like trying to figure out what to do. We can only watch so much TV, right? So we're getting into crafts and making puzzles and working with our kids. So things like Gorilla Glue. If your dog ingests it, guess what? It gets into the belly and it solidifies. And that causes um, a blockage. It's very, very dangerous. Or your kids have Legos and your dog swallows one and gets stuck in his throat. Or worse, he swallows it and, and it, it harms his intestinal tract. Little things, needles and threads, pieces of puzzles. These are all hidden dangers to our dog who's sharing our home now 24-7 thanks to COVID-19. Um, liquid potpourri. Now, I don't know anything about your house. This is not a smell you vision here we're using. But with everybody in the house, and depending on what part of the country you're in, you can't open windows because the weather might be bad. It can get a little stale. I was going to say funky, but I'll say stale. So in that case, some people are trying to make the air fresher. But using things like liquid potpourri is downright dangerous to the dog for many reasons. The first one is it can cause respiratory problems. Second, I'm a dog. I get excited your home. You have a lit potpourri on, on your coffee table. I wag my tail. Ow, I burn my tail. The first thing a dog is going to do is put it in his mouth. Now you have mouth burns and tail burns and maybe a house fire if you're not careful. So really avoid liquid potpourris. Um, try to avoid uh, un over exercising. I know we're bored, but work your dog's noodle a little bit. Have him learn a new mental game or go bowl free and have him have a scavenger hunt for his meal because he's pent up with like you are. So these are just some of the things I wanted to share with you. And then the other area besides dangerous foods and, and some of the craft items and, and all is how we are cleaning and sanitizing our home. We are looking desperately for products that have ammonia and bleach. Um, here's the problem. Things like pine sol, scrubbing bottles, Formula 409. They may feel like liquid gold to us because they're in such scarcity and we're squirting it on our counters and wiping everything down in our floors. But to a dog, 
on their paws and their sense of smell, they're getting respiratory issues and it can actually make them vomit, dizzy, and damage their mucous membranes. So here's the deal. There are some pet safe brands, and don't worry, I'm not representing anybody. Think of things like Better Life, BioClean, K-L-E-E-N, or Seventh Generation. But I certainly understand your need to get the, the cooties out of your home with COVID-19, with the coronavirus. So when you do things like clean your kitchen floor or your kitchen island or your counters, have your dog in a safe room like a spare bedroom or your bedroom with a keep busy toy or some item. Make sure that whole surface area has been thoroughly dried. And then take a clean wet cloth and run over that surface before you let your dog back in those areas. These are just some hidden dangers um, that I wanted you to be aware of. Um, I will bring it back to Krista. Krista, any, any comments on that, your thoughts? I love everything you said. One thing that you reminded me of, because uh, I just did an interview that's gonna be on the podcast about essential oils. Yes. And a lot of people use these diffusers a lot. And there are essential oils that are not good for dogs. And you're forcing them to smell this all day long. So please be sure to check and out the ones that aren't good. What I've been told by veterinarians is this, and this is one of the greatest uh, um, examples I've ever heard. Dog's sense of smell is so much better than ours that if you Krista dropped a Cheeto in an Olympic sized pool, your dog can smell it. So imagine the magnitude of these essential oils continuously wafting through your house and what that does to the nasal uh, membranes for the dog. And it could cause behavior issues too, but I'm not a big fan because uh, unless there's some area to aerate or the dog has a safe area, you're actually maybe causing more damage than, than good. Yep. It's and an other hazard. So, yeah. And the people that love those plug-in smells that yeah. are right there at dog height. Yeah. That's Point. another thing. That yeah. I would well, the only ones that I like are the ones for dogs that are the fake pheromones, the adaptal or the dog appeasing pheromone that kind of makes the house smell you know, equivalent to us going into a house to buy and, and you walk into the kitchen and it smells like baked chocolate chips and you're like, oh, honey, we got to get the house now. It smells so good. Well, right. there are some scentless to us good pheromones that dogs can be used to help them keep calm and chill. Um, but you're right. It's aimed right at their nose. Good point. Yep. All right. Well, before Arden continues, uh, if anybody has a question, again, on your bottom of your screen where it says ask a question, just click that and put that in there and we'll be fielding them as we go. So Arden, do you want to take it away? Yeah, I I want to tell you guys that um, one of the best gifts you could ever give your dog, I know we love to take them on trips. Um, I know we like to exercise with our dog. I know we like to buy them the best orthopedic bed, but they end up sleeping in our bed and other things, really nice harnesses, you know, you name it, great food. But this is April. April is Pet First Aid Awareness Month, but I think it should be Pet First Aid Awareness Year. Every day of the calendar, uh, we need to be our pet's best health ally. So one of the things that's really important is to, is to take a pet first aid class. Now, humbly, I make it fun. My classes are fun because I think you learn when you feel safe and when you're in a good mood. And all my classes, whether they're in person or using something like this or Zoom, where it's live and interactive, always features Kona and pet safety cat Casey, who's more dog than cat. He has traveled to 13 states, conferences by plane and by car with Kona and I, and we teach veterinary approved pet first aid with a real dog and a real cat. Um, 
And I also have a thing that I call how to be a mutt giver. This is my term. And what that means is I really believe in teaching practical first aid. Who wants to hear a bunch of big words and formulas and somebody talking blah, blah, blah. So there are times in our world when something, uh-oh, happens to our dog and we don't have a pet first aid kit handy. So in my classes, I teach you guys how to use what you're wearing, what's around you to stabilize, immobilize, and get your dog to the pet, to the vet. So I'm talking like poop bags, drawstrings, uh, aloe. Uh, one of my favorites is this one. If you have a medium to large size dog, and something happened, they went flying off the porch, and they're limping. And you don't know if that's a sprain, a tear, or a hairline fracture. You certainly know it's a compound fracture if the bone breaks through the skin. But I'm talking about the ones where they can't put a lot of weight on it. It can be hard to handle and to be able to get to the vet. So what I do is I tell people one of my MacGyver tips is go to some place like Ikea where they have these plastic coated big shopping bags and purposely cut the length in the front and the back and leave the handles. And guess what? You have a makeshift gurney. You can carry your dog safely out of your house. Now think about that. If you wrap your dog in a towel or a blanket and you try to drag them across the carpet or rugs, there's friction and it's really hard. But because this is plastic coated, hey, there's no problem. It slides, it glides. So that's one of my MacGyver tips. The other thing I wanna tell people is how you approach an injured dog. Now we love our dogs. I'm gonna show you my little friend here. He looks really, really kind of sad and sweet, right? But when a dog is in pain, even your best friend, your dog that loves you like no other, they have four F options when they're in pain and you're approaching. They can flee, they can freeze, they can fidget, or they can fight. So don't let the little dog or the big dog, any dog can bite anyone at any time. So I'm going to show you a couple of makeshift MacGyver things you can do to muzzle your injured dog while you're rendering aid. And it has to do with having your dog's leash and a towel. So with the help of Kona, Kona's first going to be a regular dog with a regular nose. So I'm going to show you this demo. You ready, Kona? Okay. All right, here we go. All right, Kona. Kona, come on up. Oh. All right. Kona is reminding me that when you are approaching your dog who's in pain, we never approach our, even the sweetest dog face to face because we risk getting bit because, again, freeze, fidget, fight, or flee. I call it the doggy De Niro. You looking at me, I'm looking at you. You looking at me, I'm looking at you. You don't want to do that. You don't want to spike their stress and their fear. The best way is to approach a pet from the back. You can control the head better. The other thing I teach people in class is when you're around their mouth, try not to have your fingers apart because look at this, nugget, 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 nugget. It's easier for a dog to bite a finger than it is if you do a hand sweep. So in our class, I pretend to ask, you know, do you remember the Karate Kid? Wax on, wax off. So try to get in the habit of keeping your fingers together around their face because it's harder for them to bite your hand than it is to do a, hand, a finger that's separated. So one of the quickest ways to muzzle a dog because you don't want to be bit while you're helping them if they're bleeding or they got um, a, an injury that you have to splint is to make a makeshift muzzle. So you just easy. You just take one of your six foot leads. Please don't use a leather leash or a chain leash. And look, I make a smile. See the happy face? 
And behind the dog, I make a loop. And now I have this size. Come here, Kona. And over the head of the dog, the first tie is at the bridge of the nose. Did I do? Oh. <laughs> Kona goes, I wasn't moving hard. All right, so let me try it. All right, so, and practice now with your dog while they're not injured because they're going to know what to expect. Obviously, Kona, this isn't her first rodeo. So I put it over her nose. I do a, a snug but not tourniquet. Now, right now, it's at the bridge of her nose, and that keeps that lower jaw from opening. I come underneath, and I make a second tie under the chin. And then I go under the ears. Remember, dogs have all different size ears. And I do a third tie at the base of the neck, and I tie it in a bow. Easy. Now, here's what this accomplishes. It keeps Kona from opening up her lower jaw to bite me. That's where they bite. But she also can breathe, and I can monitor her. So if she starts, say, choking or she collapses, because I tied it in a bow, boom, it's a quick release. Now, you're going to say, well, that works great for your dog. But I have a brachiocephalic breed, one that maybe have that pushed-in nose, like the pug or some pit bulls or boxers or Boston Terriers. You get the idea. So one of our Mutt Giver tips to be able to um, muzzle a dog like that is again, you need your, your your leash and your towel, but in this case, Kona, come on down, come on. We're gonna pretend that Kona is a Boston Terrier. So you, you take a, a, a towel, a thick bath towel, you fold it, you bring the crease side towards you, you then lay across about two inches from the end your leash, and you fold it, not roll it, Okay, Kona, come on up. Come on up, buddy. She's a great girl, isn't she? Now, you come underneath. Come on, Kona. And you make sure that it's a nice distance. And this is where you take the leash and you tie it in a bow, but you tie it pretty snug so it stays up here. And this will help prevent her from being able to bite you with any kind of force because she's got a pushed in face, but we have this wide and long barrier that's helping her. So as you can see in the back, come here, Cone. It's pretty and it's pretty tight up here, right? But this is nice because the towel doesn't hurt her throat either. So you could use your sweatshirt if you're out on a trail or something, but a, a nice thick towel works very very well so i wanted to show you two simple things that you have all around your house and always reward your pet when they do a good thing right kona give me a touch kona, touch it up you are awesome all right there you go I have to give one to the cat because he's just looking so krista that that's one um just one demonstration I need you to help me kind of keep track of the time. I was hoping I could uh, show them something about choking, but I didn't know if anybody had any questions. I didn't want to keep blathering on and on. Sure. We don't have any questions yet, but choking is definitely a hazard. So if you wouldn't mind showing us what we should keep in mind if that happens. Okay. Kona's up again. Okay. <laughs> Her first, isn't she a good girl? She's perfect. All right, come on up here, Kona. Come on, come on. All right, you stay here, baby. Okay. The thing about choking, guys, is I teach people in our classes how to be a pet detective. What does that mean? It means you have to tap all your senses. So you're not only looking at the situation, and that means forward, left, right, up, down, and behind you just like first responders do, firefighters, police, paramedics. But you also have to listen. Is there some strange sound? Are they growling? Are they whimpering? You're also using your sense of smell. I know we don't have a nose like a dog, 
but is there a sweet, sweet breath coming out of the dog's mouth? Did they get into my sugar-free bubble gum? Are they going into a diabetic ketosis? You see how you're using all your senses. So when a dog gets into stuff, and we know, <laughs> dogs investigate their world, they pop something in their mouth and they're like, uh-oh, and they start to choke. If you run up to your dog, most likely your dog is gonna do one of three responses. They're going to try to run away. They're gonna to try to eat it as fast as they can, and it could cause damage to their throat and airway because they're trying to get it in. Or they can turn around and try to bite you. So what I say in this, when it's a case of something where the dog got into and they're choking, you listen and you respond when that choke, which is like a coughing and a lurching, you hear the sound more like a strider, which is like a... <gasps> <gasps> and they're not as active. It's because whatever they got into has now partially uh, blocked their airway. So in this case, we're going to show you on how to do abdominal thrust using the doggy Heimlich, and we're going to show you how to work with a small dog, a medium dog, and a large dog. Now, we'll start with Kona. She's a medium-sized dog. So come on up, Kona. Come on up. Come on. She goes, hey, everybody. I want to tell you another thing. My nickname is Ice Cream Kona because I'm very nice, nice Kona. All right, guys. Right here, I want you to all make a fist up and down. Then put your hand underneath it. And I jokingly say it's like a cup of tea, like a cup and a saucer, right? So you're all British now. So take your one hand. When that dog is going from that cough, cough to the <gasps> So take your hand, glide it on their rib cage to the end of the rib cage, which is the in the middle, which is the sternum. Now you're going to find that that little soft nugget after the ribs is a lot farther back than you expect. In this case, it's right here on Kona. So I put a fist up and down on that spot. Now, to be able to do good effective abdominal thrust, I take my other hand and I cup that fist and I listen. I do a series of five thrusts that are up and forward. So everybody try that, up and forward. So I go here and I wait. When she does that, <gasps> On the exhales, when I do the abdominal thrust, I go, so it's inhale, thrust, inhale, thrust, inhale, thrust, inhale, thrust, inhale, thrust, inhale, thrust. After five, I open her mouth, and I try to see if the object has been popped forward. When they stop having a strider, two things are at play. They either pop the object into their mouth, or they swallowed it into their belly. And we don't have x-ray vision, so we don't know what that's all about. Now, that's how you do it for a medium-sized dog. If you got a big dog, like I have an 85-pound dog named Bujo, you can come from the back and, it, again, on the exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and then inspect. You can also do back blows on their shoulders. Now, come on down, Kona. Good job. Good job. My cat, Casey's going to pretend to be a little dog. So if you've got a puppy or a toy breed, you would have them sit in your lap with their back against you. And again, you're feeling for the end of the sternum. And that's where you make a fist. And you're going to go, Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And then you're going to open their mouth, do a finger sweep, and try to get the object out. Now, a few things, uh, tips, and that are these. If your dog got into something linear, like dental floss or a shoelace, or your kid has some kind of craft item with a long string on it, be very careful. If when you're trying to um, get the object out of the mouth, 
if there's any resistance, you don't want to yank because you can actually cause more damage to the throat. What if it was a needle and thread and that needle is in the belly and you're yanking, you could serrate some of their internal organs. So in that case, you're gonna have to do rescue breathing for that pet. So for any linear object, we do not keep pulling. True story. My sister has a dog named Maddie, who we call the white ghost because she poof, just shows up anywhere. Well, uh, somebody had left out dental floss on the little um, end table in the living room and Maddie got into it. I was in the back bedroom and I heard this crunch, crunch and choking sound. By the time I got all the way down the hallway around the big chairs and furniture, I saw little Maddie pass out. I opened her throat and I was able to unweave the dental floss and you know that little metal clip, it was right there. And I was able. I don't know if there was other pieces of plastic swallowed. I had to give her one minute of rescue breathing. And she woke up like, what's up? Everything good? Well, big, big tip, guys. If your dog, you have to do CPR or rescue breathing or has a major bleed or a broken leg or got stung by a bee and going into anaphylactic shock or been poisoned, there's a whole host of things we teach in our classes. Even though you've stabilized that pet, as we did with Maddie, you still need to take the dog to the vet to be examined by a professional. What if Maddie would have swallowed a penny and some other things? So sure enough, I took Maddie, I call ahead, which is very important, and we were able to do some x-rays to make sure she had nothing else, no masses in her body, especially in her belly, and she was good to go, but it was worth it. So that's just a couple tips for um, choking. Um, I'll go back to Krista. Go ahead, Krista. Okay. Thanks, Arden. Regarding choking, I just wanted to make sure everybody knows about the Bully Buddy, one of my favorite products, Bow Wow Labs. So if you give your dog bully sticks, which I know my dog Winston loves, that end piece that a lot of dogs can choke on. Yeah. This bully buddy, I should, if I had a moment, I would go get it, but it secures the bully stick in it and they can never get to the end part. And yeah. it also gives them a, a spot for their paws to hold it down while they're chewing. So mm -hmm. I love that product if, if you guys uh, feed bully sticks. Arden, that was amazing. We have some questions coming in. Oh, okay, cool. All right. All right. Okay, we have Jennifer asking, what if after the first set of thrusts and the mouth sweep, nothing changes? So the object hasn't moved. What right. do you do then? You, you still do repeat the abdominal thrust and, and I'll show you on Kona. If your dog collapses, and that's a whole big course, we teach um, CPR and rescue breathing. But if your dog collapses, because think about it, if you're st if you're blocking the airway and they're not getting air in, it's going to be a matter of minutes where the dog is going to collapse and pass out. Then you're going to have to do um, rescue breathing. I'm going to give you the real short class because in our classes we have a mannequin that's used in veterinary schools and we're, we do it the whole thing. But let's let's have Kona pass out, okay, guys? She's we can't get that object out. So, and the airway is such that she lost the oxygen, so she passes out. The first thing you do, guys, you say the time out loud, even if you're the only one in the room. Why? Because when your veterinarian says, when did Kona pass out or when did Winston pass out, you can say the time. So sometimes, even though you're the only person in the room, you say things like that because think about it. As somebody trained in pet first aid, you are being your pet's best ally and you need to give the facts to the vet. They can't deal with this emotional state. Oh my God, my dog's going to die. And, and so I tell everybody in my class, you get permission to freak out later because the pet needs you in the present moment. They smell our emotional states. They know when we're afraid. So when you say things like, I got this, I'm here for you, Winston, even if you're scared out of your mind, but you know I get to freak out later, you can do a better job of caring for that dog and stabilize them to get them to the vet. So would you like me to show you on Kona? Sure. 
All right. So here's the, the very short class part of this. Here we go. <laughs> hey, Kona, you're choking. Come on, Kona. Kona, up, 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 up. All right. Kona goes, I'm not choking. You're choking with your choking. All right. So let's say that Kona was choking and I was doing those abdominal thrusts and the object is not coming out and she's still gasping. After a while, when you don't get a lot of oxygen in, kaboom, they're going to collapse. So when your dog passes out, you need to do rescue breathing, as I did with little Maddie at my sister's dog. So the first thing I do is I take my hand and I say, open the airway. What does that mean? That means align the head with the spine, which opens the airway up really well. The second thing you need to do is open the mouth. And then you need to pull the tongue forward. They're, they're not in a danger of swallowing their tongue. We do that just to open the airway even more. This is a biggie, the third one. They're on, out for the count. You really do a finger sweep and look inside and see if you can easily dislodge an object. And then the fourth step, you take your hands and you cup their muzzle. And you do what's called mouth to snout. Yep, you're breathing into their nostrils. But you've got to make sure that you have an airtight seal on their muzzle because if I'm blowing air into her nostrils and looking to see if it's getting to the lungs and I don't seal this muzzle, the air is going to escape out of her muzzle. The medical term is blah, 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 blah. So open the airway, pull the tongue forward, finger sweep, airtight seal, you breathe and then say check. Breathe and check. You're trying to make sure that the air you're blowing into the nostrils is getting to the lungs. Now, if you do that and you get this like a blockage, don't panic. The object is here. Keep opening, rocking that head back and forth because that just might be do the trick to pop the object forward or to be swallowed. And I got to tell you guys, if your dog passes out and you revive them, just like I did with Maddie, and they look like everything's fine, please, please still call ahead and take them to your vet to be properly examined. All right? All right. That's about the quickest I've ever taught rescue breathing. <laughs> Love it. It's so good. All right. So well, makes it fun, doesn't she? She Kona is awesome. a trooper. Well, both of them are. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> They've I done mean, this look, a few times. Look, look at the look at my babies. They're like, hey, what's up, guys? Just hanging out. <laughs> He's in the meatloaf position. He's she's doing well. So yeah, I'm just saying I'm very blessed because we've trained each one of them. The cat is also a therapy cat, gone through school. But, you know, these are a couple of shelter alums, and look what they're doing to give back. So I'm, I'm a, little, a little proud of them. <laughs> a little bit. They're amazing. Well, that was awesome, Arden. Thank you so much. Uh, just so you know, the answer to our poll, we have 80% of the people do know CPR on their dogs. So I am very impressed. Kudos to them. And, and guys, just so you know, I've been teaching uh, uh, first aid for uh, about nine years. And what I learned from uh, ER and critical care veterinarians back then and what is being taught now is different. So that's why we um, always are learning and new things. Um, so there's new techniques out there that are more effective. So if you hadn't had a class in a while, you know, consider taking a class. That's great advice. And everybody, we do have America's pet health and safety coach with us, Arden. So if you have any questions whatsoever about first aid, safety, what should be in my first aid kit, uh, what happens when my dog has heat exhaustion or a bee sting or whatever you can think of, please uh, take advantage of her being here. And again, at the very bottom in the middle, ask a question. Arden, you did a uh, little teaser in the beginning that everybody that is here today gets a little something, a giveaway. 
We're not everybody. Oh, you mean? Uh, well, the, the, yeah, yeah. The but media. Not, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be broke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you want me to talk about the book or the what? The course, course book? Why don't, we, why don't we first do um, the PDF? If okay, you can good. explain. Uh, so All everybody right. signed up for this. Yeah. And I want, I want you guys to have knowledge. Knowledge is power and knowledge can save your dog's life. So everybody that signed up for Krista's class here today, I'm sending you, a, I think it's a 14 or 15 page PDF. Um, I think I have an example. Hang on. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Everybody's going to get a PDF from me and pet first aid for you. And it'll give you kind of the basics for pet first aid. Um, and I, it's just my gift from Kona, Casey, and me to give you some, at least get your paw in the water. Uh, the second thing I want to talk to you guys about is there's so many different ways to learn first aid. And Pet First Aid for you, I, if you're really into it, I do a two-day instructor training program using Zoom. If you are a pet professional or you really want to take a four-and-a-half-hour class, I can teach you in person or Zoom, and you get a two-year certificate, a big course book, and there's Kona and Casey right here. But if you're like what we're doing here, a little teaser, I have a two, two-and-a-half-hour class where I teach you the basics, and again, in person or using Zoom. So my last name is Moore, so I haven't learned how to clone myself yet, but um, I am trying to get as many people knowledgeable with the right things and um, we even teach a whole class on MacGyver isms and things like that. So I, I want you, if you're interested, Pet First Aid, the number four and the letter U, Pet First Aid for you. If you go to our schedule page, we actually have some openings for our April 29th and May 11th class. We're probably going to add another one later in May. And I don't care where you live. Our next class has people from four states. So you can sign up there. You'll be uh, get a two-year certificate a full course book, and the best part of being stay in place, which I found teaching this now with the, the Zoom, is I'm showing you on Kona, and for example, Jennifer is in Los Angeles, and I can see her working with her dog as I guide her, so you can actually have your dog in the classroom. That's pretty yeah. cool. That's one advantage of this this technology versus in person. So I know you're bored out of your mind at home and what a nice time to try to learn a little bit more about how to be good for your dog because they're doggone good for us. So is that good? Uh, Chris? Yeah. And if, if you guys notice at your, at the bottom of the screen, there is a green button. Uh, it says full dog and cat first aid CPR course. You just have to click that and that will take you to art in sight and you can sign up for whatever date works for you for any of the classes where she still has room and she is offering us a discount. So if you want to take advantage and Arden is an amazing instructor, as you can see, she makes things simple and fun. Please just click on that uh, green button and that'll take you to uh, the sign up area. And Arden, we do have another question. Okay. All right, Gina is asking, how can you tell if an old dog severe or labored panting is normal or an emergency situation? That's a good question. Um, I, I recently lost my dog, Cleo, who was 17 years old, and she was one of the original, I lived in California, surf, surf dogs. So... Um, there's a lot of things that are age related in dogs that are just like us. They get congested heart failure. They get arthritis. They can get fluid in their lungs. And so in our classes, we first teach you a head to tail wellness because you got to know what's normal in your dog. Every dog is different. A little dog is going to have a faster heart rate and respiratory rate than a big Great Dane. So you, you know what's normal in your dog. And so we, with Kona and Casey, we do a head to tail assessment on it. So being a pet detective now, not just being a pet parent, but being a pet detective, you're going to be able to give more specifics to your veterinarian. Like, well, she's always kind of had a fast heart rate, but now I'm noticing she's lurching a little bit more. Or there, when I pick her up, I get this uh, uh, sound in her chest. 
So you've got to tap your senses, listening, smelling, looking to be able to, to be able to give the vet more information because that can cause give that person the ability to find a quicker diagnosis, maybe at a at a better rate. I wish our dogs could live forever. I really, really do. But the key in my classes is to teach you what's normal and to teach you to be a pet detective. I love it. As we're wrapping up, everybody, does anybody else have a question? And while you're thinking, uh, <laughs> at the beginning, Arden gave you a teaser that she was going to give away one of her newest books. And Arden, can you think of a trivia question and the first person <laughs> to answer it in the bottom right comment box that gets it right wins the book? Well, this will be a fun one. I'll see if anybody's paying attention. There you, you go. What's the name of pet, my pet safety cat? We know the dog is pet safety dog Kona. You guys can quickly go to ardenmore.com if you don't know. And <laughs> there's a little bio on them there. I helped you. But I think I'll do that because it's something different. So okay. I will give you an autographed copy of this. And Kona has her own ink stamp. And she will also sign it for you. This just came out, guys. I've written two dozen pet books. This is one I love the most because Kona gets to talk to you. <laughs> So how's that? Oh, uh, no. So somebody go yes. to .com yes. and you'll find the name of my, this cat right here. Oh, it was a long, lean, orange tabby machine. <laughs> <laughs> Any other guesses? Come on, guys. Oh, you were, that was close, Chloe. Yeah, that was close. Was, that was Cleo. That's pretty good. Um, if you, uh, uh, let's say, um, Remember that poem, Something at the Bat? Blank at the Bat. What was the name of that baseball player? There's a poem. Two syllables. Starts with a C. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're playing charades here with Wagon. <laughs> All right. All right, Gina. Way to go. Kindly send uh, the name and the address. And if you don't have 20 dogs, um, I will put their names in the autograph, paw graph, um, and mail it, media mail, wearing gloves and a mask to my post office, to you. Regina, I will email you and get your information to Arden to send the book. So congratulations on that. Uh, bef okay. So before we wrap up, um, First of all, I just want to say kudos to all of you who have invested your time to learn, especially when it comes to the health of your dogs. And I encourage you to keep the conversation going and join the Wag Out Loud Unleashed community if you haven't already. And if you're interested in the replay of this webinar, it'll be at the same link. And a cool feature is that you can go through all the questions that were asked and click on one. And since everything is time stamped, you'll be automatically taken to that point in the webinar when the question was answered. So I think that really enhances the replay experience. We appreciate Arden for being here today and for taking the time. Arden, how can everybody get a hold of you? Well, they can go to ardenmore.com. Also Facebook, Arden Moore. And I have a radio show called Oh Behave on Pet Life Radio. It has a half a million listeners. Somebody named Oprah voted it as one of her top three pet podcasts. I was a reporter for 20 years when it was real news. And so I interview people in the pet world as well as celebrities. We've had everybody from Betty White and Jennifer Aniston to Dr. Marty Becker and Brandon McMillan and Jackson Galaxy. It's a fun podcast. It's recorded. Just go to Obehave on Pet Life Radio. And please, please sign up for our pet first aid classes. We are using this time while we're staying sheltered in place. And this is the perfect opportunity to learn first aid. And if, if you want, we can add more classes. But you get these dynamos, these dynamos, right, Kona? Right, Casey? There you go. Arden, thank you. I hope everybody learned something new today and checks out everything that Arden has to offer. There's so much more that she can teach. So check her out. 
And we will see you hopefully next month for our dental webinar. Thank you, everyone. Pause up. <laughs> Pause up. <laughs> Bye, Kona. Good girl.